they're cooking on SA Live today. Mm. Yeah, uh, there were some <laughs> young people down there too. Well, not well. Okay. Not them. <laughs> not them. There are some younger people. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, not me. <laughs> you know. You know. You know. I know a lot of folks did not win. No. You know anything in the Powerball but, uh, thing, but. We're going to tell you how you can win 500 bucks. Boy, yeah, Mike a, carries cash. Yes, I do. <laughs> he got and that right out of his wallet. <laughs> and they take credit cards, everything else over there at the Hayden and Chef. Bill Corbett is here talking turkey sides. Yes, sir. So we're going to be doing a little bit of dressing here in a second. You know, we got our little magic dust. This is really the secret right here. It's the dill and uh, celery seed right there. And stale bread, dry bread, right? Yes, stale dry That's bread. That's the key. Okay. You All can right. get those to go for Thanksgiving. And Jen is out there at Palo Alto College. That's right, Camila La Magica makes tamales, and you may recall this book we featured at this time last year. Well, it's coming to life here on stage. We'll tell you about the remaining shows, what you need to know to come get a sneak peek here at the show. That's coming up. Back to you. And a veteran owns a beer company, and he's got a special event coming up just for veterans coming up, of course, on Veterans Day. And of course, we've got the Briscoe Museum here, and we're going to tell you all about Native American Heritage Month and all the fun you can have at a free event. Wouldn't it be nice to have a stack of hundreds if you could just fan yourself with like this? Isn't that what you do every weekend? <laughs> <laughs> all that and more on SA yeah. Life continues. Monopoly money. <laughs> Showers are not a guarantee this afternoon, but we do have some light showers that have started to pop up in Wilson County, Gonzales County, pushing into Guadalupe County. This is very light rain that will just pass briefly. Otherwise, it's going to be a warm afternoon with a high temperature in the low 80s. Tomorrow, some patchy morning fog and drizzle. We'll repeat that weather through Thursday. It's going to be warm both tomorrow and Thursday. Strong cold front arrives Friday. Temperatures will tumble during the day. 30% coverage of showers possible with that front moving through and then over the weekend it's going to be windy and chilly uh, we'll have cold mornings in the 40s chilly afternoons in the 50s little taste of winter here for us over the weekend and into next week sure looks that way thank you so much sarah Thanks. and a reminder it's election day you need to vote and speaking <laughs> of veterans Friday is Veterans Day, and it's always nice to see the veterans out uh, trying to help themselves and other veterans and we're going to find more about that right now as a live starts right, right now Today on SA Live, a local children's book about the tradition of tamale making is coming to life on stage at Palo Alto College. We take you there. Plus, we learn about the Yanaguana Indian Arts Festival at the Briscoe Western Art Museum and how it's celebrating and paying tribute to Native American heritage. And Spreckens of Fun, we check out all the fun you can find at Worst Fest this year. Food, music, culture, history, and of course, the beer. Prost. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from Historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Bring in the hollow. <laughs> yes. A little this way. A little this <laughs> way. You this come, is it. This is everything we've been training yeah. for. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> Didn't think that was going to work out. Oh, it did. Thank goodness. <laughs> I was like, you know, what could possibly go wrong? You'll find out when we do. And it worked out. Good afternoon. He's Mike. I'm Fifi LaRue. <laughs> <laughs> Our first gelp guest is helping us. Gelping us? Yeah, something like that. We got all giddy about the hollow. So uh, with some Thanksgiving sides, joining us is Executive Chef Bill Corbett from The Hayden. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. How are y'all doing today? Well, we are. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's you know, all excited. And we we're very excited because, I mean. You gotta bring the party when you bring the holler, right? <laughs> yes. And that's, that's the key to good stuffing, right? It's yeah, the it's, bread. It's, it's the bread. And so uh, being a Jewish diner, we have uh, challah rolls laying around. And so we have Thanksgiving coming up. So that's what we're going to be using to make our uh, dressing with for this year. And folks that aren't familiar with challah bread, it is an eggier kind of a bread? Yeah, it's uh, leavened with egg and then it's braided. So this is actually kind of a leftover from uh, Jewish New Year's, so Rosh Hashanah. So that's why it's braided mm -hmm. for the uh, start the next year. Okay. So we have some of these oh. left over from that event, so we're ready for uh, this event. And there, <laughs> this is an example of some of the sides that you can pick up at home that they're going to be making and you can get them. So first of all, good stuffing. Yes, sir. How so dried out bread, mm -hmm. and then we're going to add in some of this. Uh, we sweated out some carrot, celery, and onion. So okay. we put some of that in there. Okay. All of that. Yeah. Okay. Berries mm -hmm. and raisins. Mm -hmm. Some pepitas with some almonds. 
couple of eggs. We like to put in some eggs. Okay. And now then we you, put a little chicken stock in there. Would well. you okay. want to beat the eggs first? No, that's what matter. your hands for there. So oh, you can get so it just get all messy. Oh, oh yeah. And oh. then of course. And then the we got this. Dust. So yeah, so this is a little bit of dill, celery seed, thyme, onion powder, and garlic powder. Is making stuffing like that and, and some of the spices it, no recipe, you don't have to measure, like just like, yeah, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. What do you think? Oh, uh, you know, you gotta have some idea of what you're doing. But you know, at the same time, we do more savory stuff. So that's more of a pastry person's game. There was okay. a, a French chef told me one time that uh, a pastry chef can become a savory chef, but a savory chef will never become a pastry <laughs> chef. And I, I fully endorse that statement. <laughs> okay. oh, it already smells amazing. So, all right, so all this right. will all go into a yeah, skillet. right there into that pan. Mm -hmm. Then we're mm -hmm. going to put that in the oven. How long does that cook? What temperature? Uh, about 325, probably about like 20 minutes or so. In the, See, the old chef line is always when it's done. When it's done, it's done. <laughs> and ding! And then ding, you and ding it, and then there you go. That was amazing. And then we're going to garnish <laughs> once again. So we're going to put a little bit more of these seeds on there. Woohoo! And the point about doing the dry bread is that it takes all that moisture and absorbs it. Really yeah, well, and right? it still leaves some okay. of that texture there. You can see right there, so it still holds up. Okay. I'm going to, you yes. talk amongst yourselves, I'm going to grab so a couple of real quickly. <laughs> so we got okay. some of that. So this will be one of the sides that we're selling. Uh, we're also got the Brussels sprouts you can see here, cranberry sauce. We can totally hear Mike like, <laughs> digging for forks yeah. back there. We're okay. going to be, cranberry we're gonna, sauce. Cranberry sauce, we're going to be doing a green bean casserole, but we're going to have our own pastrami gravy that we're going to mix everything up in. Ah. Uh, you can even get a side of pastrami gravy if you like that. And then we're also doing uh, turkeys this year. So we're going to smoke them in our smoker where we do our pastrami and our whitefish. That's really good. That's so so good. yeah, that's good. Yeah, and, good stuff. And uh, if you wanted to say feed six to eight people, what can you order? So you can order uh, the turkey by itself. That's going to be for seventy-five dollars. Uh, most of the sides are twenty-four. Cranberry sauce is fourteen. Pastrami gravy mm. is sixteen dollars. If you want the whole meal, it'll be. Uh, $200 for everything, so you get a little bit of a discount there. And that'll easily feed six to eight people and still have plenty of leftovers. Well, and the nice thing is, you don't have to sit there, because doing Thanksgiving dinner can yeah. be like launching, you know, the space shuttle or something oh, like that. All you're going to have to do is together, fire so. up the oven and just start rotating pans through there and just make sure everything's heated up and you're good to go. And we even are selling batch cocktails. So right here we have our perfect pair. So it's a gin and a rosemary infused cocktail. That's kind of like a fun take on uh, apple cider. Oh, wow. And for those that are a little bit more traditional, we're also doing batch cocktails of uh, apple bottom. So that's uh, banana rum and apple brandy. Oh my Ooh. goodness. So you can, you can get really fired up and get ready to talk politics at the yeah. dinner table. <laughs> <laughs> no, election day today. we yeah. will all be over by then. So. <laughs> So get those orders in because you're not open on Thanksgiving, correct? No, so pre-orders will be completed on November 18th and then you'll select your pickup time. So either November 26th, or I'm sorry, yeah, November 22nd after uh, three o'clock or November 23rd. When'd you do the Brussels okay. sprouts? Those are great. Yeah, so that's our uh, proprietary tomato jam that we got there. And then mm -hmm. we do the Brussels. Yeah. And then you add in some uh, candy peanuts and a little bit of herbs oh, on wow. there for extra texture. Yeah, that's are always a crowd stuff. pleaser, whether for Thanksgiving or any day of the week at the Hayden. And you have a new location set to open? We are, yeah, mm -hmm. we're about to start rolling that out. Uh, the sign is up over the new location, so people are talking about that. It's going to be over in the Elan Market off of Wurzbach and Military, so we're all excited about hopefully February-ish. 2023. Okay. And you won best diner for any meal in San Antonio. So breakfast, lunch, dinner, go. What would you pick for each meal? Uh, chicken biscuit for breakfast, uh, Larry David for lunch, and then uh, our new pork rib dish that'll be coming out later at the end of this month. So we're going to do a coffee rub pork rib with a pimento mac and cheese. Oh, wow. Mm. Yeah. We're, okay. What meal does Brussels sprouts <laughs> fall into besides all, all meals? Of them? All okay. meals. No, this yeah. is amazing. Mm. All right. Thank you so much for more information on the Hayden. All you have to do is head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. All right. That raises a question. Since we're talking about sides, Thanksgiving, if you can believe Thanksgiving is two weeks I from Thursday. I cannot. No. I, I mean, you, you hit the first of September and the rest of the year just I flies know. by. I know. It's so full throttle. What is your favorite Thanksgiving side? My right side. <laughs> That's why if you ever see us look in pictures, Ted, look it's at Ted always, laughing. If you, if look at Ted in, laughing. He wanted me to do that. If you see us in pictures, it's always this way because she yeah, likes her right side. So anyway, okay. okay, get back on there. Uh, <laughs> so, um, favorite Thanksgiving side? Sweet potato. I have my wife makes good sweet potato yeah. casserole, so yeah. that's good. So. Okay, so let us know at SA Live Case out on Facebook and Twitter. You may see your answers <laughs> later in the show, and you'll make us even hungrier.
All okay. right, from making a holiday meal to a local tale about making another holiday favorite, tamales. There's a familiar face. Yes, our Jen Tobias Trusky is out at Palo Alto College to check out their recently adapted on stage production. Hey there, Jen. That's right. Hello. We're all excited for the tamales season, right? I know I am. But the book that is coming to life here at Palo Alto is one that you may be familiar with. It's Camila La Magica Makes Tamales. We featured it this time last year. It's coming to life. Mm -hmm. And I have Nick Castañon joining me now, the professor of drama yep. here at Palo Alto. Now let's talk about how you brought this story to life on stage. So I found out about this story on via Instagram. Um, I was trying to find a story that really spoke to our community um, and mm -hmm. really for our kids here on campus. What is it about tradition? What is it about abuelas? What is it about food that we all love so much? And I just, I fell in love with the story, contacted our authors, our wonderful authors, Paloma and Cariño, and said, hey, I would love to adapt this for stage. And they said, go for it. Yes. Yeah. Cariño, Paloma, we love the Cortez yeah. family. Yeah. But you said there's something a little different that you were able to bring to life it with was. this one. And <laughs> we've got one character in this book, Osito, and he really doesn't have a voice in the story. And I wanted to give him some character. I wanted to give him a strong voice. And so that's... A, I had to change it up a bit and they said, go for it. And they let me. Yes. Yeah. And that's probably a part of this creative process, right? When you're right. able to, to turn the book into something magical on something stage. Something completely <laughs> different. It yes. still stays true to that yes. book. And that's what I was really trying to honor. Was that tradition? Was that food? Was that family? Yes. And I think we've captured it perfectly here. Yeah. Wonderful. Now, I think we're about to get a sneak peek. Yeah. We have a scene that we're going to let you listen in on. All right. Take it away. I found the guitar. It was hidden in the bedroom. I was sniffing around, and it was under a pile of coats. I looked it there. <gasps> what you doing, chef? Using the mocajete, Camila grinds the spices, waiting for the magic to start. Mocajete? Spices? It's so heavy. Keep grinding until all that's left is powder. It looks like just powder, abuela. Let me see. Osito, no! Ah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to interrupt this scene now. That is adorable. I love how you guys are bringing Osito to life here. And we have Camila Isabella, right, who plays Camila. Hello, Isabella. Hello. What's your favorite part about taking in this character? My favorite part about this character is just how relatable it is to me. It's relatable to a lot of people, but especially I used to make tamales with my grandma, so I get to remember those while being on stage every night. Yes, and we have to let everybody know that you are just 13 years old. Wow, okay, you're getting mistaken for a college student when you're here. All the time. <laughs> I've heard. <laughs> what, what has the reaction been like from the audience when they come watch this? The audience really loves it, especially when the kids come in. Yes. They just, they have so much fun. It's so funny. They enjoy it. They laugh. Mm. Yes. It's amazing. And what would you say your favorite part is about just being on stage here and bringing this story here to life? My favorite part is definitely just getting to do it every night. Mm -hmm. You know, getting to let the kids in and experience what I'm experiencing is just so amazing. Yes, and carrying on the tradition through the story. I love it. You guys are amazing. I'll let you get back to that. Now, if you would like to come see the show, there's how many left? We've got two more shows, Friday mm -hmm. and Saturday, both at 7 o'clock. Mm -hmm. I'd love to have everybody show up. Um, we can buy tickets online or just come on down to the box office a day of show. Yeah. All right, and then there's so there's two left, and it's obviously very family friendly, it is, right? Yes, so totally family friendly. Bring the kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's some songs <laughs> going on with it. You can sing along. It'll be fun. And yeah. what is your favorite part, just about the tradition of tamale making it as well? Is I think it's. Uh, my grandma and I never made the tamales. We made rum balls. Um, <laughs> and it was it was that time with grandma that I got to mm -hmm. spend with her making food for yeah. the family, to feed the family. Yeah. Yes. All right. Well, I'm yeah. so glad that you're able to bring this book here to Palo Alto. And I'm sure everyone is coming out and enjoying it. I can't believe you have a 13-year-old yeah. here <laughs> starring in it. But you guys are doing amazing. For more information, you can head over to SALive.com and click the Ad Scene on SA Live tab. Thank you so much, thank you. guys. Thank you. Fiona, Mike, what do you think? That is it's so cute. And, and our dear friend, Carino Cortez. Yeah. Yes, I it's love that it's a play. I love mm -hmm. it. Thank you. Oh, and as Jen said, for more information, all you have to do is head to our website, salive.com, or just scan that QR code on your screen. All right, still ahead, how you can win $500 for the holidays. We're announcing a new winner every day in the Thomas J. Henry Cash Giveaway. Plus, we learn about the arts festival happening at the Briscoe Western Art Museum and talk about why it's important to remember Native American heritage. That's next on SA Live.
Welcome back to SA Live. Well, it is Native American Heritage Month, and you can celebrate the culture and history at one of our favorite local museums. Yes. Uh, Joining us is Liz Jackson, Vice President of the Briscoe Western Art Museum. All right, let's talk about this annual yeah, arts festival. Thanks, guys, for having us on. We mm -hmm. always love to be here. We're so grateful to SA Live. It means a lot to us. So and thank you. the big day is coming up a week from Saturday, right? Yes. So next Saturday from 10 to 5 at the Briscoe Western Art Museum, we mm -hmm. are celebrating our Yana Wana Indian Arts Festival and you know a lot of people don't know this this is something I didn't know for a really long time the Yana Wana is the name that the indigenous people that lived along the banks of the San Antonio River that's what they called the river Yana Wana so that, oh, yeah. Oh. So that's why our festival is called the Yana Wana Indian Arts Festival okay so, and, okay. and such a, a deep part of, of the culture around here and the history around here, which is why it's celebrated, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And so, you know, at the Briscoe, one of our four pillars that we celebrate every day is part of Western art, um, along with cowboys and ranching, and then of course all the wildlife. Right is the Native American. And so we're gonna be doing this all day at this free family festival. Uh, there's gonna be uh, the San Antonio United Powwow dancers will be there. Um, we're gonna have, after the opening blessing, this big large group powwow dance and you'll get to join in and be part of the fun. And you know, you really start feeling just the, you know, you, 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 it really comes to life when you're part of the movement and then the dancing and learning what some of these dances mean and that every piece of some of their costuming has a real meaning to it. And so learning that and learning those stories, you know, that's how we're going to preserve this culture for our kids and everyone. And, so and even some of the little crafts that you, you have yeah. are, are educational back to, to what went on, right? Absolutely. So here's an example right here. This is um, a little birchwood canoe that you can, you know, carve and end up with your own little canoe. So that's okay. sort of fun. And then, I, I, you were working on this earlier, yes. so this is great. A little pinch pot uh, with some modeling clay, and yep, you just take that around, pinch the edges together, mm -hmm. and you're building up on a, a, a pot. And another thing, we're gonna be doing uh, birch tree art. Um, you know, Native Americans really used every part of the birch tree. They used it to make their canoes and baskets, and it has properties of, you know, being very malleable and um, easy to work with, and there's kind of some waterproofing aspects to it, so they were able to make their canoes out of it. So what here, this is a great little project. You just wrap the yarn around the canvas, and then you're just gonna put on the paint around um, all over your canvas, and it's gonna give you this, uh, <clears throat> It, day long it, it'll it'll outline it'll outline yeah. okay. the um, the birch, birch tree. tree so this is what you're going to end up with something like that okay so day long yeah. event and uh, along with all the activities and things you can see food as there, well right? oh yes so there's a brand new food truck in town called reservation and they serve authentic native american inspired dishes like the indian fry bread and i Heard through the grapevine. Yes. You guys are going to have them on next week. We so actually excited. just recorded the segment today and they're going to be on next week and they are ecstatic about being a part of this event at the Briscoe. We're thrilled to have yeah. them. So um, that's going to be something that people really should come out and at least, you know, to try that as well. Mm -hmm. And while they're at the Briscoe, the entire museum is open and is uh, free to the public that day as well. So you get to see all of our collections and we've got a special exhibition on right now. And like you said, because it's the Saturday leading into Thanksgiving week there might be a lot of relatives in town and this is a great event to go to and just a great place to take folks as well to right the bring your family cool, bring so. your friends it's a great way to kick off Thanksgiving week okay right. so great thank Appreciate you it. all thank you so much for more information on the Yanaguana Indian Arts Festival at the Briscoe Western Art Museum just head to our website salive.com and click on the as seen on SA live tab all right, still ahead. Fiona checks out all the fun. She didn't take me with her. You can have it worse than us, <laughs> but we went there anyway. The celebration happening all week long. Beer and food and dancing and more food and more beer. Plus, get a new look by ditching the glasses and contacts. You'll see the holiday season in a brand new way and it'll save you money too.
Well, do you dream of having freedom from glasses and contacts? Z LASIK can be life changing and save you thousands of dollars in the long run. And getting it from Manrique Custom Vision could save you another couple of thousand. Here to tell us more is operations manager Richard Doinoff. Welcome, welcome. Good to have you here this week. Hi, Fiona. How are you? <laughs> All right. So tell us about the procedure. You know, who is a Z LASIK candidate and how does it work? Um, we correct nearsightedness, farsightedness, and astigmatism. Um, it's totally blatant and pain free. So anybody that's basically in glasses between the ages of 18 and 60, basically, they can give us a call and we can see if they're a candidate that's free of charge for the people that watch this show. Now, blade free, pain free, and just a few seconds per eye, right? Absolutely. That, that's the most amazing part about it because you don't even have time to think about it. And it's actually, it's over. You're, you're up and you're seeing immediately. Which is good for folks who might be nervous about oh, something yeah. coming out their eye, no matter what it may be. You don't have the time <laughs> to think. That's how fast it'll be over. And then, I mean, it is completely life changing. Let's talk about financing for those wondering. Uh, medical spending account, flexible spending accounts, because everybody's getting ready to renew them, of course, right now, or they have to use them or lose them. Still the only player in town with 36 months interest free. So, you know, while the interest rates are going to eight, nine percent, right. we're still at zero percent for 36 months. So we can usually take care of anybody. Can't beat that. And what what do you tell folks after the procedure? They, they tell us. I mean, they you, you look at our Facebook page. I say this all the time. You look out. They see usually the next day at their follow ups when I'm talking, they go, why didn't I do this like so many years ago? And that, it's OK. You just have to get it done and you'll get the same experience. Veterans Day coming up. You know, I'm a veteran uh, that we, we really appreciate all the veterans out of there that, you know, they keep our country free. Just keep that in mind, freedom from glasses and contacts. It goes hand in hand and it keeps you safe. You know what? It's for safety purposes. You can't beat it. Well, thank you for your service, Richard. Mm -hmm. And a special deal for folks watching right now. You see it on your screen. Absolutely. Up to $1,500 off the Z LASIK. Give us a call or text LASIK to 45384. And we'd love to help out all your viewers. They do, they do come in and they do a great job with us. And of course, you did this back in the day, right? I did it the blade. You know, I tell everybody that and back in 1998, actually. And you can see here, I'm a little older than mostly everybody in here and still see perfectly. So, I mean, it's the it's most- Mike. <laughs> I'm older than Mike. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's, the, it's the most amazing, most amazing thing that you can give yourself for one of your loved ones. All right. So let's get the information up on the screen. The first 10 people to call or scan that QR code that you see there on your screen will get a complimentary consultation up to a $2,000 discount, right? Or up to $1,500. $1,500 discount on qualified eyes at Manrique Custom Vision Center. Just call 210-354-2020. That's 354-2020. Or text LASIK to 45384. And for more information, just visit the website sa.manriqueeye.com. Richard, again, thank you so much. Always good seeing you. All right, cheers to a local veteran-owned brewery that's celebrating the lives of those that have served our country. We find out why they're called Long Cab Brewing just ahead. Plus, Sprechen Sie Fun, I join the Worst Fest crowd for a look at this year's food, music, events, and of course, the draft beers. Prost! Sprechen Sie Fun! <laughs> Delish. Well, Worst Fest is underway here in New Braunfels, and we have got a look inside. Joining me right now is Miles Granzine, president of Worst Fest. All right, Sprechen Sie Fun, an understatement, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Tell me what folks can expect the second they walk through the gates. Well, the first thing you're going to walk into our gates here, you're going to notice just a beautiful grass, probably the most beautiful festival you're going to walk in. We got the Kamau River, crystal clear river. That, it's just a beautiful setting here. We've got our brand new building that you know 19 caught on fire we got the new one and also the worst fest that partially caught on fire too we've replaced that and uh, then you're going to get into the music first thing you're going to walk into you're going to hear the music playing we got the big tent with alex meister there and once you get past that you're going to catch the smell of all the different foods we have some of the best ones i mean potato pancakes the the, the uh, pork chops on the stick the worsen toshin the reuben uh, one of my favorites is is something simple and that's the sausage with the macaroni in it it's, it's so if you're ever eating macaroni and sausage it's all in one very good very good <laughs> it saves a step yes <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, and as you mentioned, there is entertainment, right? Yes. Okay, and as we go into kind of the following, uh, you know, this next weekend, anything to mention? Well, we have uh, Alex Meister be playing, mm -hmm. and if you ever watched Alex, that is a show that he, he puts on a great show. And we also have back from three years ago, because of COVID, the ladies band from Germany. And they are entertaining too, very entertaining. So this weekend, during the week, they'll be here till Thursday, both of them. I encourage you all to come and see these guys. And folks can also shop, right? There's a lot to purchase. Lots of shopping. We have the new area down below. It's called the Stelton House. Lots of great shopping there. We've got the museum here that's got some really cool mugs and hats and pins. And if somebody wanted to get in for free, they can do that, right? They just need to know when. You got to know when. That's Monday through Thursday. It's free. And it is, it, it's, it's a nice crowd. But if you want to save a little money, we encourage you to come during the week. You just might want to take that day off the next day if yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> to recover, right? right? Okay, let's talk about the beer hall. Well, we are inside the worst hall and joining me right now is Gross Opa, Bob DeFonzo. Hey, Fiona, how All are right. you? All right, this is incredibly cool because there's a lot of history here and a lot of history behind Worst Fest, yes. right? Yes, there is. It starts back in 1961. We had a, a gentleman named Ed Grist came together with about 10 of his best friends and they thought about having a sausage festival or a week of celebrating sausage because New Braunfels was known for making sausage. There were 15 sausage makers in the town of New Braunfels back in 1961. He went to the city commission and asked their blessing to be able to put this festival on and they did. They started it in December of 1961 and it has grown into 61 years of a wonderful festival. And tell me a little bit about the history behind the Gross Opus. Sure. You know, in 1967, the president of Wurstfest was able to select one man to be the Grossa Opa, the big grandpa. And he selected uh, Mr. Zisig, who was also a past president of Wurstfest in 1967. And it, it's a tradition that has been passed on for all of those years. And I am very fortunate that my friend, president of 2022 Wurstfest, Miles Granzine, selected me to be his Grossa Opa. So he looked for me, and I'll tell you what, I will give you a limited edition of our Grossa Opa pin. We are here in Mega Bar, Bar 5 at Worst Fest, and joining me right now is Opa Emeritus, Wayne Klassen. All right, tell us about this bar because this is where the magic can happen, right? It is the <laughs> Mega Bar, and it has a lot of taps, and there is a lot of beer back here that needs to be gotten rid of. That's right. I, know, I noticed your fun meter. Is that fun meter right there? Is that pretty accurate? No, it's not even close. It's off the chart. <laughs> yes, spreck and see fun, right? Exactly, and we're going to have a lot of it. <laughs> All right, for more information on Worst Fest, just head to worstfest.com. Prost! And more brews are on the way. We join a local veteran-owned brewery that's honoring service members in a special way. Welcome back to SA Live. Well, Veterans Day, of course, is this Friday, and there's one local veteran-owned brewery that's honoring service members in a very special way every single day. Owner of Long Cab Brewing, David Holland, joins us. Hello, hello. hello. All right, and you brought uh, several beers from your current lineup, right? Yep, that's right. Okay. Yep. Okay. So you honor veterans with uh, your brews, right? Yeah, specifically Green Berets. That's what our whole brewery is sort of branded after. Okay, and the one we're looking at right there. Yep. That one, uh, so uh, about four times a year we do a dedication beer where we honor a fallen Green Beret and then we give the proceeds back to charity. Uh, this one was for Tim McGill. Uh, it's currently on tap right now. So with every purchase, you know, it raises money for charity. Specifically for this one, uh, the Green Beret Foundation, which is located here in San Antonio. What's the Green Beret Foundation do? So they help, uh, they help uh, either, uh, you know, the families of um, of a service member that was killed uh, or uh, wounded, mm -hmm. um, helping them with all sorts of uh, you know transition programs. So they do they do a myriad of things, and 
recently they were just focused on post 9-11, but they've, they've since broadened their scope to, in, to encompass a lot more. And on the beer, if you are interested, yep. there's a story on the side of it, right? That gets on, little... on every one of them, yeah. We've got, some, we've got some pretty unique names for our beers, but every beer is named after either a Fallen Green Beret or some aspect of Special Forces history. The next one right next to it there, the uh, 1952? Yep, that's right. What's the significance with that one? So that is the year that Special Forces was, uh, uh, began. So it was founded as, a, as an official unit. In 1952, so we thought it'd be cool to do a beer after the the founding year. And you're pretty familiar with Special Forces, right? A little bit. Yeah. yeah. How many bit. years? Uh, Thirty. Wow. Thirty years. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Yep. Some Seen there. all different corners he of the world, right? Tell us. He can't tell us a lot. He <laughs> can't tell us. All sorts of stories but, he can't tell us. <laughs> but he can tell us about this beer, yes. and this is the the special one, right? Yeah. That is every year we do um, uh, we do a special release. Um, for the holidays, and we we bottle it up, and this one uh, pr in particular is a spiced Belgian quad. So it's a Belgian-based beer, but it has um, nutmeg, allspice, vanilla, and cinnamon. Oh yeah, that's cinnamon and nutmeg, yeah. And yeah, the it's, artwork so it's on like, the label was done by your daughter? Yep, my daughter Maggie did that. Yeah, I'm pretty <laughs> proud of her. Okay, yeah, I need a bottle of that at Worst mm -hmm. Fest with, with a couple of Bratwurst. <laughs> and that you also have coffee, Go easy, that's, right? that's like 10%, yeah. you know, yeah, so I that's mean. what we do. That's what we do. <laughs> and this coffee? Uh, yeah, so there was, a, uh, there was a coffee roaster. He's, he's another Green Beret that owns this company, and they actually own a farm, a finca, down in El Salvador. And so the opportunity was, was right. I mean, they were moving here. They're trying to establish a foothold in San Antonio. So we thought it was a great time to use them as a roaster for a long tab uh, branded coffee. So it's been doing pretty well so far. So we're really happy with it. And then big big event coming up at your place on Friday, right? Yep, that's right. Uh, we always do a Veterans Day event. Uh, we expect a pretty big crowd. Um, so we'll have a special menu. Uh, we've got, uh, uh, it's beer and barbecue, so we've got a, a local guy, uh, uh, the Texas beer dude, uh, will be, <laughs> we'll have his uh, big uh, smoker out there, so we'll be cooking up a lot of barbecue, and we'll release our annual Veterans Day uh, beer called The Regiment, which also generates money for charity. Oh, wonderful. And yep. you'll also be a vendor, of course, at Hemisphere. Yes, right? we'll be there at Saturday for Hemisphere, so yeah, so it'll be a busy week. Fantastic. Well, thank you yep. again for your service and thank all, you. The, Appreciate all the veterans it. out there as well. A very special yep. Veterans Day. And, of course, food and uh, lots of great beer out there at their place, which is 410 in Bandera, you said? Yep, right inside the loop. All right. Okay. Yep. For more information on Long Tab Brewing, just head to salive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab or just scan that QR code that you see right there on your screen. All right, up next, how you can enter to win $500 in cash, our daily winner of the Thomas J. Henry Cash Giveaway, when SA Live continues. Another day, another winner of the Thomas J. Henry Daily Cash Giveaway. Congratulations to Lupe Arenal. You are taking home $500. Thomas J. Henry is giving away $500 every day, Monday through Friday, from November 7th through December 16th. One lucky winner will take home $10,000. You can enter to be the next winner online at tjhcash.com slash San Antonio. Good luck. Tomorrow on SA Live, a local chef just kicked some culinary butt at the Taco Rumble. See what he made to get best taco in Texas and why the win was so controversial. Plus, your San Antonio FC is headed to the championship and we take you to the field with them to have a little fun before the big game and tell you about a free tailgating event. It's all tomorrow, 1 p.m. right here on SA Live. Well, Breast Cancer Awareness Month may be over, but it's still an important health issue everyone should be aware of all year round. And here with important information to share is Dr. Robert Ramirez with Conviva Care Center. Welcome, sir. Thank you okay. for having me. What should women know about breast cancer? Well, the first thing to know is that breast cancer is not only a concern for women, but men can also develop it too. As a matter of fact, one out of every 100 cases of breast cancer is diagnosed in a man, usually in the form of invasive ductal carcinoma. That much? Yes. I didn't realize it was that much. So how common is it? 
One in every eight women in the United States will be diagnosed with breast cancer at some point in her life. One out of every eight, that's a pretty sobering statistic. Mm -hmm. So if it's not you know, a woman who's watching, it can be someone they know. And seniors who are watching should also make note that 50% of cases of breast cancer are diagnosed in women 65 and older. So this is a disease that disproportionately affects older adults. Oh, you're kidding. That's right. Okay, what are some of the common signs and symptoms of breast cancer? Because breast cancer is so prevalent, it's important for everyone to know what to look for. You know, be mindful of your own body, know your own body, and have a low threshold for bringing signs and symptoms to your doctor. What to look out for, um, nipple tenderness, uh, thickness of the breast or underarm tissue, changes in skin texture such as dimpling, enlargement of pores, lumps, or even any change that's unexplained in the size or shape of the breast, especially if it's occurring on one side. Okay, so just be aware of your own body. And, and monthly uh, self-exams? Yes, um, we would highly encourage um, viewers to do monthly breast self-examinations and have a low threshold for bringing bringing anything to your doctor's attention. Okay, even if it's that little lump, maybe that, you know, so a calcium deposit or something, but still. Better to be safe better than, be safe than Absolutely. sorry. Absolutely. So if someone's diagnosed with breast cancer, what are the treatments? Every case is unique. Depending on how far the pro uh, breast cancer has progressed, depending on where it's located, most patients will undergo some sort of surgical intervention. And some patients will require additional treatments such as chemotherapy, hormone therapy, um, immunotherapy, or even radiation therapy. Some cases will require chemotherapy before surgery. Mm -hmm. Now here's the good news. We've come a long way in regards to breast cancer treatments and the treatments are only getting better. And as a matter of fact, the survival statistics are looking really good these days. For breast cancers that have not spread, the five-year survival rate is as high as 90%. 10-year survival rate is 84%. So oh, wow. there's a lot of hope out there. Okay, and if somebody's concerned about any symptoms, see your doctor or healthcare provider. Absolutely, right? number one rule is don't panic. It, um, the signs and symptoms that I outlined may be breast cancer, but it may also be something else and your doctor will know whether or not you need further testing. Okay, thank you. Great information. Okay, for more information on Conviva Care Center, of course, call 210-981-4872 or visit the website meetconviva.com. Doctor, thank you very much, sir. Thank you for having me. All right, earlier we asked you, okay, let us know. Thanksgiving sides, what's your favorite? Oh. That table looks good. <laughs> All right. Oh, yes, this is from Linda and Anna with an adorable picture. The homemade mac and cheese. Yes. Corn casserole. That sounds really good. Alma says sweet potato casserole and pecan pie. Is pecan pie a side or a dessert? Are they different? More on that coming up. Stuffing <laughs> and pumpkin pie. Again, side dessert. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Valerie says homemade mashed potatoes with homemade Gravy, yes. You know, the unsung hero of sides, I think, mashed potatoes and gravy. Green bean casserole, that's always a good one. Nice, on top. Cindy says, the dressing, can't go anywhere without that. Nope, fruit <laughs> salad, shredded coconuts. And you know what we haven't seen, though, is what? the cranberry like. sauce out of a can. A lot of people like that when you, you know. I you know. actually don't mind that. No. Okay, and don't forget, Yanaguana Indian Arts Festival, the Briscoe Western Art Museum, Saturday, November 19th, 10 to 5. For more information, just head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. And of course, don't forget Worst Fest. It runs through the weekend up there at Landa Park. There's some delicious bratwurst. Don't forget to stop by at uh, Nagel's Bakery. Oh, and there are fabulous SA Live fans saying hi to their favorite meteorologist, Steve. <laughs> Mike, but that's okay. <laughs> they watch. Thanks, Pete.